You probably heard that Robbie Robertson of the band died recently. He was a huge influence on my play and I want to share it with you. And yeah, it goes way beyond the weight. The band wasn't a band I heard or took to immediately. In fact, I think the first time I heard them was when I watched the movie Easy Rider. That movie features their song, The Weight, and of course, one of the great songs of the era. I just love it. But a few months later, I was in a used record store and I saw their second album and I bought it. It's just called The Band, but it's also known as The Brown Album. I immediately loved it. In fact, it's probably one of my top five albums of all time. I hadn't heard anything like it. A combination of country and blues and old time and yeah, rock too. And every song on it is either good or great. Up on Cripple Creek, Whispering Pines, Across the Great Divide, Jawbone, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, and all the others too. But you can also hear its influence on other artists like George Harrison, Grateful Dead, Elton John, Pink Floyd, The Black Crows, just to name a few. I know it's a bit contentious because of the falling out that Robbie had with Levon Helm, but Robbie took a huge part in writing, performing, and recording those songs. Now I know most Robbie Robertson tributes are going to cover the weight. And as I said before, I love that song. But one that's lesser known and I believe equally good and features Robbie's guitar playing is the last song on the Brown album, King Harvest Has Surely Come. The lyrics are really touching and the performances, especially Richard Manuel's singing, are so moving. But I want to focus on Robbie's guitar playing on this song. To me, Robbie influenced me in a similar way that John Fogarty did. Both of them drove home that you don't have to just bang out chords. You can play chord fragments or even single notes. For example, in King Harvest, instead of playing this, Robbie would play a sparse, herky-jerky sort of rhythm like this. I love how he does that, but his style and skill is really exhibited on the solo that ends King Harvest. Now, it's never going to appear on any top 10 list, but it's perfect for the song. Here are the chords to the solo section of the song. The key beginning and end points are A minor and C. So he doesn't do anything crazy harmonically. He just uses the extended A minor pentatonic as his framework for the solo. But he does so much more than just play the minor pentatonic. At this point in the song, the farmer who's narrating is at wit's end. He's gonna lose his farm, he's gonna lose his home, everything. So a soaring solo just wouldn't do. Instead, he highlights the farmer's desperation with lines like this. Notice the staccato and the pinch harmonics and that super trebly sound. There's no compression and there's almost no sustain. Or how about this line? That super wobbly vibrato isn't what you're supposed to do, but you've got to admit it sure sounds like somebody in a panic. And he played frenzied double stop lines as well. Here's the whole solo, the best I can play it without Levon, Rick, and Garth holding down the rhythm. Truly a masterpiece of a song. If you haven't heard it, you gotta check out The Real Thing. I've got it linked in the description. R.I.P. Robbie. If you like learning the styles and the licks of some of the lesser known players of the 60s and 70s, click here. 
You know, they were so good at finding simple and brilliant ways to make songs more impactful and emotional. So click here. I'll see you in the next video and I'll see you on down the road.